Coming up on Theater Talk. I was going to be a minister, and then I discovered girls and beer and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and decided against it. And that it. went down the tubes. <laughs> <laughs> Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. Okie doke from New York City. This is Theater Talk. I'm producer Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. You know Michael. I have seen a fabulous new musical, Scandalous. Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about well, it's about one of uh, a woman that you're obsessed with, Amy Semple McPherson. McPherson. McPherson, yeah. yes. My friend Kathy Lee told me it's McPherson. <laughs> McPherson. Amy Semple Who was McPherson. a person. <laughs> person. Looking That's like a true lyricist. <laughs> right. There is a fine new musical on Broadway called Scandalous about Amy Semple McPherson. Person. Mm -hmm. uh, it stars uh, three of the best best performers we have in the musical theater: the beautiful Carolee Carmelo, the beautiful Gosh, Roz Ryan, thank you, and the handsome, stunning oh. Broadway legend George Hearn. Our hunk, I love him. Your hunk. We have a couple yeah. of hunks in our show, and he's our resident. Hunk. And they brought along with them this uh, woman. We're going to have a little trouble probably uh, getting her to talk and enjoy. It. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of the great writers of musical theater, I think of Richard Rogers and Larry Hart and Alan J. Lerner and Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> <laughs> so silly, it really is. <laughs> Who has written Scandalous? Well, with some help, of course. Nobody does theater alone, and that's really the beauty of, of theater. I love the collaboration of it all. Mm -hmm. But it does start with uh, one person, well, with for me, a legal pad and a pen. That's the way I write. And, and I, we have two fantastic composers that I've worked with all along on this. David, and they are. David Pomerantz and David Friedman. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I wrote one song in the show. It is the finest song in the entire score, isn't it, kids? <laughs> it's the Dirty Irish Drinking Song <laughs> that I happen to have in my trunk. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> Next time I see a PJ Clarks, we're going to sing that one. I have some, I have some junk in my trunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, all right, Carly, you're playing Amy Semple at first. Did you know much about her before you plunged I didn't know, into the show? I didn't know anything. I, I heard about the show when it was being done in in a form of a reading about eight years ago mm -hmm, or at so. Least, yeah. I was working on You're in Town on Broadway at the time, and, and a friend of mine in the cast was doing the reading that Kathy Lee had uh, written and came to work one night and started describing the story to me. And I was fascinated because I didn't know anything about this woman. And uh, I said to my friend Jim, I said, well, who's playing my part? <laughs> <laughs> and he said. And he said, Christine Ebersole. And I went. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so back then, it was written for two actresses because it's such a, it's such a demanding role. Yeah. I didn't think it takes place Sounds over. the whole time. Yeah, and it takes place over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had written it for a young Amy and a more mature Amy. and. I wish Carolee came to me and said, would you ever reconsider and write this for one actress? And I thought she was crazy. And she said, all my life I wanted to work that hard, you know, for a role like that, that, that you're never off stage. Yeah, and it really is the role of a lifetime. I mean, she, you know, in real life, she was larger than life. And, and there's so much to sink my teeth into. So I can't complain. I dug my own grave here. <laughs> now, Ross, did you know about Amy Semple McPherson? I knew role? absolutely nothing when until you... a friend of mine called and mentioned the show and said that uh, they were going to send me a script. And I read the script. And here's what happened. When I read the script, I jumped on the computer. Mm. Because as soon as I read it, I wanted to know. Yes. And I called my agent, and I said, yeah, yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, George, you've been around a bit, too. So you, did you ever go to any of her, uh, her prayer meetings? Amy? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember her name, definitely. Yeah, I yeah. mean, in the 40s yep. and 50s, her name was still ringing around America, mm -hmm. the way Michael Jackson or, or somebody of that uh, stature. In, in the fame machine, you know, he, yeah, yeah. she was very, very famous and scandalous. Yeah. Well, tell us about her for those who don't know Amy Semple McPherson. In a nutshell, she was uh, she's the most unlikely success story. She mm -hmm. was born in 1890 uh, on a farm in Canada to a, a, a Salvation Army like mother, very legalistic, and a, and a farmer father. And um, she was an atheist as a young woman, but she was brilliant. Long story short, she ends up marrying an Irish Pentecostal 
preacher. She falls in love with God and him at the same time, mostly him because he is gorgeous. <laughs> Long story short, she, she ends up being a, a, an evangelist and a, and a faith healer herself. But she's married three times, divorced twice, is the defendant in the trial of the century in 1926 right. when she famously disappeared for five weeks yeah. uh, um, off the coast of uh, the, on the Pacific coast and showed up five weeks later claiming that she'd been kidnapped and held for ransom. <laughs> and the district attorney said, uh, not so fast. You were shacked up with your married lover, your sound engineer from your temple in, um, in Carmel. So why need there to be a trial? Well, because she was charged because two people died while she was missing, uh, trying to find fine, her. Trying to find and her. so he, he, the DA thought, and he was trying to make a, a name for yes. himself in Los Angeles, as district attorneys are wont to do. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he charged her with corruption of moral, obstruction of justice, and manufacture of evidence because he said it was a, an expensive and tragic hoax. On the on the um, I met a gal. <laughs> yes. Oh, you oh, loved yeah. it. <laughs> like me, it was. But we should say that prior to this, she had built a temple in Los Angeles. I've been to the temple many, many yeah. times. And I just took care of Lee. It's an yeah. unbelievable experience to go there. It it, it, it seated 5,300 people 5, at a time. And she would have five services on a sa on a Sunday, with 10, 000, packed in with 10,000 people waiting outside of each service to get in. Mm. Yeah. She was the biggest story in Hollywood. The most. The most um, celebrated, most controversial, and a radio star, and the first woman to have to do the have her own. Li I mean, that radio station of hers, which she started in 19, I think, 24, still, still, still sold in, in 2003 for 250 million dollars because that the, it was so powerful. The reach, yeah. the reach was so powerful. She was a genius marketer. Yeah. She was a P.T. Barnum of the of the of the pulpit, and she was a woman doing all of this at a time when women couldn't couldn't vote. She was despised by this guy who <laughs> represented, it's hard for you, I know, snidely <laughs> whiplash. You're the villain, you're the villain in this Well, he plays uh, a musical. dual role. Yeah, the, yeah, the second part there. Yeah. Uh, well, now, Rasta, uh, tell us the character you're playing, how does she fit into this I play saga. Emma Jo Schaefer. She's a brothel owner, and one of the fascinating things about Amy a real-life character. Um, yes, no. she... Well, her... It, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. In real life, I should say, a real life, Emma Schaefer was Amy's longtime uh, uh, faithful, faithful friend to the end. But if you, every picture you look at her, she looks like that... Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, she was a white spinster uh, whose, hus whose fiancé died before she could marry him. She, she never smiled for the rest of her life, <laughs> followed Amy, and, and, and I said, no, no, that's not... So, Kathy, Kathy, so, so I made her... So, a, no, she gave oh, us African American soul. brothel. Do you think she was a charlatan at all, or did she really believe in what she, what she preached? Well, I think that she really did believe. I mean, we talk about this a lot, especially in the beginning. She, she really was working too hard to have done this for anything other than true faith. You know, mm -hmm. she, she was traveling around the country, putting up tents, and you know, driving with her mother in a car and Two her children. kids, and yeah. you know, it was hard work and and very little reward. So I think during those years especially, she was really, truly devoted to it. Now when she got to Hollywood, it was kind of a different mm. animal. And the money because started she, to come in. Not so much the, the not, money because no. she died <laughs> with only $10,000 in her bank account. She was never about the money. It was about the, Fame? the celebrity, I think. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think the she celebrity got culture, a little she sucked in by that, yeah. Now George, you play a rival uh, minister who brings her down in the second act. Uh, what does he, why does he have to get her? She ruffled a lot of feathers because she came in, if there were evangelists in Hollywood at the time, and he was one of them, right. uh, she's cutting into his turf, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, so taking away the people. But also she had a tr a tremendously, uh, I think a lot of people would be put off by motorcycles coming down the aisle and things, and the Episcopalians would say, no, <laughs> you know, the, the part that's serious about that uh, said, no, that's not dignified, which is his point. And what about the naked men and women? It was naked out men scenes, coming right? down the aisles. We got naked men coming down the aisles. I didn't write this. <laughs> <laughs> but, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but you have pageants. Open call, open call. But she no, she had, right. she she had production. production. Here's what yeah. she, this is how genius she was. Yes. People who, who, who think the Bible is boring have never read it. It's like the real housewives of the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much. If you want incest, you want betrayal, you want adultery, you want murder, you want blood and lust and guts, it's all there. And so Amy realized how brilliant it would be to put on pageants and dramatize it and make people realize, wow, these are great stories. So she, if she was preaching on the uh, Garden of Eden, 
she was so savvy. She would find the most gorgeous man in Hollywood, the most gorgeous woman, put very strategic little fig leaves <laughs> on every time Ed Watts walks out in his feet. I go, nice foliage. <laughs> he's so nice. He's unbelievable. Yeah. And then she would bring in real trees and real animals from the Los Angeles yes. Zoo and put on a show. Yeah, yeah. Zinkfeld. She kind of was in the show. days before cable television, so people were, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. flocking yeah. to the temple. Well, yes, for you wonder. They and it's went. funny though when you say uh, that she understood that the Bible had all of this sex and all that. Because, you know, the George Bernard Shaw said of the Gospel according to St. Luke, it reads like a smutty French novel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it has a happy ending. That's right. <laughs> I was always so fascinated by Amy Semple McPherson, even before I heard about your mm -hmm. show, because she was this woman of such remarkable drive and such remarkable accomplishment yes. and really just a driven maniac in a certain sense. And I say very respectfully, yes. she reminds Is me of you. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been called worse than maniac. No, but, that's for sure. <laughs> but and what I time think I say maniac. I say maniac in the Good nicest Susan, way. Off the rail, Susan. They keep going. With no, 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 I have been a maniac about this. That's my family. <laughs> there, Amy's second husband was named Harold McPherson, and his, his name was Mac. And we discovered in all these different productions that our audience lost interest in Mac because. Amy lost interest in Max. So uh, yes. Max's been basically written out of the show. So my husband goes by the name <laughs> Mac now because he's, I've written him out of my life. He, he never sees me. And uh, he, he'll leave, he'll leave, he sent me flowers the other day. Love Mac. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, but you said your husband actually saw Amy Semple McPherson. Did. Frank grew up in California, oh, yeah. dirt poor Pentecostal family. And I'd been fascinated since I, about her for, for a long, long time. And I finally, I'm talking with Frank and we're first dating. And I said, There's this woman that I just can't get out of my head. He goes, oh yeah, I went to her church. <laughs> and the truth is, he was 12 years old, uh -oh. and she. <laughs> Here, comes, here comes, gang. It's Wendy. poor Frank. He was only 12 years old. <laughs> she sees her coming down the ramp like Carolee does with the chiffon and throwing out the roses. Frank has what any 12-year-old kid's gonna have at that point—a visceral, rather carnal reaction to a beautiful woman. He didn't know she was that was on drugs and dying. He didn't know. She, <laughs> he looked good to her. <laughs> she looked good to him. You know what he said? <laughs> <laughs> the truth, <laughs> the truth is, he, she was she was so sensual. Yeah. Even though she was a deeply spiritual woman, she combined yeah. the sensual. I mean, you read the Song of Songs, uh, the you know Song of Solomon. Yeah. It is, it's all there. It's an incredible, beautiful, erotic poetry. Sexy poem, yeah. Very, very much so. So it, Amy understood that. And who better than Carolina Player? <laughs> well, no, Carolina gets that because when you go online to see. Uh, tapes of, of Amy, yeah. you don't get that. No, you don't. I have come to Broadway, the mecca of sin, the citadel of worldliness. You have a religious background, a very strong and powerful background. You know, religious I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of religion, Susan. Really? I, no, I don't. Religion think. to me, and we don't have to talk about that because our right. show is really not, religion puts people in chains and binds them up, and true faith is a relationship that frees you up. So I'm a deeply spiritual person, but um, I like what Amy did, and I think this is the other reason I love so, her so much. She got dirty for her faith. If you really believe in something that says, love your neighbor as you love yourself, she did. She she went where no nice woman went. She went into the brothels. She went into the bars. She went into the wrestling rink. She went into the anywhere. I knew, I knew her from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's you coming know, to get you at P.J. Clark's yeah, tonight, yeah, baby. <laughs> Just to let our viewers in, I first met Kathy Lee at uh, P.J. Clark's where um, she drank uh, uh, very modestly, but I had a few glasses of white wine. <laughs> Shock and awe is the only thing I can... <laughs> yeah. Spoken to someone who dated a guy who was at Toot Shores all the time, right? Frank knows yeah, that Yeah, but world. he had to play football, honey. That's true. He, you know, yeah, yeah, since, yeah. I, since you're all in the musical theater, I do want to ask you a bit about your backgrounds and how you fell in love with this business and how you how you began. Carolee, can you tell me the first show you saw uh, or heard as a kid that made you think, I want to be in this world? You know what? I never wanted to as a kid. This was not my... It's not what I studied. It wasn't my passion. I don't think I even realized as a kid that people could make a living doing theater. <laughs> I was I was a business major in college really? and got my degree in business administration. Mm -hmm. huh. And um, you know, as a kid, I think I had some cast albums. Uh, I had Godspell and I had West Side Story. But I think just because my parents had them, it was never anything that I, I never did shows as a kid. But or, you had a uh, you voice. Had a voice. Yeah. I sang in choirs, <gasps> but I never, you know, I wasn't like. I, <laughs> 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 She's never had a voice lesson, never had an acting lesson. She is just 
And I say this with all the deepest admiration and respect. The woman's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say a fraud. No. I, I, Perfect. Could be. No. I say she's from a planet called Marvelous. Well, how did you go from the business to then doing a show and suddenly realize, oh, I... Well, I, when I was in college, I did a few shows in my dormitory cafeteria. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as a result of that, I sort of got interested in, you know, musical theater as a hobby, mm -hmm. certainly not as a career. And I found myself doing a, a community theater production of The Music Man mm -hmm. when I was a senior in college. And a producer uh, from, a, from an equity theater saw me and offered me a job for the summer after I graduated from college. And at the time, I, I wasn't, I was sort of at a crossroads and I wanted to kind of maybe go to law school, maybe get my MBA, maybe just move somewhere and start working for IBM or something. And when he offered me this job, I was like, well, that'll be fun for the summer. I'll go up to the Adirondacks and goof around for a couple months. And Can then you I'll imagine all the actresses that were watching this out there? No, I know. Know. Oh, what the actresses are watching this show now? What it's I think I they know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then and I didn't know, so I remember having this conversation. I was standing in my mother's living room, and he called, and he said, well, you know, if you do this, you have to join Actors' Equity. And I was like, well, what's that? You know? <laughs> And everyone I tell this story to goes, oh, now I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have basically the same story. I was, Do you? I was a nightclub singer in Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was making lots of money being a big fish in a little pond. Mm -hmm. You didn't know right. that? No. Oh my God. I thought you didn't. No, no, no. When do we ever have time to sit around and just talk about? It? Never. Never. Okay. <laughs> so you're singing in Detroit, and you're discovered out there. Yeah, I, I was doing. Uh, I was working in nightclubs, and I heard uh, someone told me Amos Behaven was in town. They had seen it. I didn't even know to go to the theater to see theater. Really? I was a nightclub baby. That was not my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I went and audition, and Shelton and uh, Richard Maltby came in, and he. They came to the club. And they saw me sing in the club, and they gave me the job. And 10 days later, I remember my dad bought me this big blue trunk and painted my name on it in gold, sparkly. <laughs> and Broadway, they, baby. I know, it, it makes me for Clint right now. <laughs> and um, I came to New York, and that was, it. that was it. And now, George, you're a legend in this business. Um, how did you, were you singing as a kid, or you weren't being old? Oh, yeah. that <laughs> I know I'm old, but don't say how old. You're still yeah, yeah, yeah. fine, boo, you're yeah, still fine. You don't understand, you don't understand the impact that this man had on me when I came to New York as a teenager to see La Cage au Folle and uh, hear George Hearn do I Am What I Am was one oh. of the great <laughs> moments in the history of the yes. of the musical theater. Uh -huh. Were you always a singer? Were you, or did you want always, to always, in the old days before television, my mother played the piano and my dad sang all the old when our eyes are smiling and all that kind of stuff. Road to Mandalay, oh, sentimental yeah, songs. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, so we, we sang around the piano almost every night, almost every night. Mm. And it was wonderful. My sisters and my dad and, and uh, people used to do that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my degree's in philosophy. I was going to be a preacher. <laughs> I was going to be a Presbyterian minister or a forest rancher. Those were my <laughs> And now you are a preacher, <laughs> but not a very nice one. <laughs> I'm not much of a forest ranger, but I have a little farm. I live on a little farm up in yeah, Kathy. Yeah. Kathy I brought remember. me back. Then did you kind of just drift into it as they did too, or did you? Uh, yeah, just I, I just uh, I, I was going to be a minister, and then I discovered girls and beer, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and decided yeah. against and that it. That went down the tubes. <laughs> <laughs> and you but thought that where where will I get girls? Well, yeah, yeah. well, that's it. It's wherever sinners are. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the theater was where the sinners were. Who were girls. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I drifted and they started paying me. Well, I had seen, when, as a child, I had seen the Desert Song. There was a, like the Muni Opera in St. Yeah. Louis oh, called yeah. the Moat then. Yeah. And uh, the operettas would come through. And I, it was extremely romantic to me. Yeah, yeah. The love songs from oh, those shows. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, they're beautiful. Susan Prince, all of those oh, songs. I love them. I they're love still them. gorgeous shows. But Lombard. the books don't work at all, no, you know, no, anymore, no. so you can't do it. But, but that's where I fell in love with singing. And I liked Shakespeare. I used to memorize a lot of, as all pretentious kids do. And I was pretentious, <laughs> even then. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know, Kathleen, you're, you've been in love with the musical theater, what, since a kid as well. What was yeah. it that got you going as, as a child? Well, um, just getting into the business was hearing Barbara Streisand sing people on the radio. Stopped me in my tracks, and I said, I don't know what I just heard, but I know I want to be a part of it. And I didn't know it came from Funny Girl. I didn't know anything like that. But as a child, my mom and dad took us to Shady Grove Music Theater, which was in Gaithersburg, Maryland, you know, theater in the round. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's always hot. And I, looking back on it, it must have been awful theater. But you don't know 
awful theater until you've experienced great theater, you know. But back then, I remember a hot, hot August day, and Camelot was playing. Mm -hmm. And Gwen, I was sitting on the on the on the aisle, and Guinevere came up and stood next to me, uh, in the zone, in character, w waiting to make an entrance. And something about the glisten and the sweat on her arm and her costume up against my leg, and looking at the intensity of her and the the sheer beauty of her. And uh, and that score, I love the score from Camelot. Anyway, that was it for me. Mm. I just thought I uh, it was literally it wasn't the roar, of the or the smell of the grease paint. It was the, it was the smell of Guinevere. <laughs> 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 I wanted to be a part. It just was magical. Mm. And and I'm all these years later. I I I still feel that way. I was honored when I made my Broadway debut in, in 2000 yeah, in and, a Sondheim show and called Putting It that, Together. Thought, yeah. Oh, thank very you. Very good man. But George was my leading man. Oh. I mean, I, I'm opening, I'm making my Broadway debut mm -hmm. in a Stephen Sondheim show, and George Hearns, my leading man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it made up for all the people who were disappointed when Carol Burnett wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you, were, on mon you were Monday with, nights, right? I was Carol, Tuesday nights. Night. Tuesday nights. But then she had a groin injury, and so I took over the last two weeks of the I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> you heard nothing that. to do with it. Uh, this That's, is not, show That's not what she said, this George. <laughs> That's very good. Can't beat a good groin injury. <laughs> you were wonderful. You were absolutely splendid in that. You were so she sweet to me because the, I was terrified. I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd met with Steven Sondheim at, at Car, uh, um, Cameron McIntosh's apartment, and, and, and they're trying to talk me into doing this thing, and I'm thinking, I, I, I just had, you know, I just couldn't see it. They talked me into it. I go to rehearsals, first time, and I'm doing something with George, and he was so kind, and he goes, it's as if you've been doing this your whole life. And it meant so much to me. Mm. And, I rem and I said to you, I said, well, in a way, I have just <clears throat> not on this rarefied real estate called Broadway. Kathleen, don't you realize this? He's been using this line for years. <laughs> it's the girls. <laughs> always <laughs> worked. Oh, no, it's still well, does. <laughs> still does. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap it up. But in honor of our first meeting, Kathy Lee, I brought a little. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. oh, where'd the glasses What go, are we Susan? drinking here? Yeah, the way to a woman's A heart. very good sans serif. Sans that's it. All Since right, I know, baby. You, I know you and Hoda uh, uh, do it. <laughs> Boy, you guys. Fancy glasses. You guys do these yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The scars are Is it up? Is no, 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 we have to this is oh, it's classy. Oh. It's classy. I'll be like the waiter. I'll be like the waiter. <laughs> when are you coming to see us? I'm, co well, I'm, gonna I'm giving you a little time to settle in. So, Oh, I wanted to say, though, I heard, and this is what I want to see. Oh. Most writers in the musical theater, as you know, they're terrified. They're in the back. Let me do that while you Thanks. talk. <laughs> Thank you, it's Give it to me. You know, they're in the back, and they, you know, they don't know where the audience is. Kathy Lee, I hear, goes up and down the aisle and shakes hands and welcomes all the you people. You know what's... And you were so nice to everybody. I, I, I was watching you operate, and I was thinking... Not operate. You, no, no, you <laughs> operate. But you I was watching because you were you were cordial and and focused on every single fan who came up to you. you and there were a be. lot of. Them. I've been in this business for forty five years, and I'm still here because of people like that. And they said, "We saw you heard you talking about Scandalous on TV, and we heard Carol Lee sing, and 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 I, I got on our pl the first day." First night of previews, I was leaving a little restaurant on our way to, and we thought we'd have a, a modest crowd, and you know, first night of previews, and we, our show isn't branded like you know so many of them are these days. And I'm walking out of the, um, I can I can multitask here. I was walking <laughs> out of, of the restaurant Gallagher's, and Mahoda says, "Look, Kathy, you have to see something," and the and the line was all the way up the whole block. And as I walked into the theater, people are going, "I flew in from Canada. I drove in from Ohio. Just got here from Florida. Did I not tell you?" That no, early. you didn't. I was I was crying by the. We had a full house. Yeah. It, does help, it helps to have a popular TV show on which you can uh, well, promote your... <laughs> but why is it popular? And, uh, and no it's Oprah in the color purple. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, you know, I've got a big mouth and I will use it. I, I try to, not to shamelessly shield, but sometimes it happens. <laughs> are you, 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 you going to let any uh, any other shows come on your uh, show to yes, talk about you know, their wares? Or? I, you know what a huge booster I am. Yeah, I know, I, I know. Hoda and I went... It's so funny because Hoda uh, has lived in Ladies. New York... <clears throat> thank you. A long, long time. And... Um, worked here but never gone to the theater. So I said, listen, if we're going to work together, if we're going to work together, I, um, we are going to have, we're going to go to matinee Wednesdays every day, every week, and then we are, we're going to have lunch and go to matinee. Mm. And so I took her to the first thing we saw was um, South Pacific at Lincoln Center. Mm -hmm. and, oh, here you go, baby. Okay, baby. And um, he's singing some enchanted evening. <laughs> and Hoda looks at me and she goes, that's from this. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> then it happened with Patti LuPone when she's, everything's coming, and she was, that's from <laughs> Finally, there's uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones singing, um, Isn't it, isn't it Rich? And that's her favorite song. She goes, I said, yes, that's from this. <laughs> now, of course, she's Ben Brantley. She says, I don't like the arc of that second act. Oh, my God. Second <laughs> actor. She's giving you notes on your own show. All right, well, here's to uh, Scandalous, a fine new Broadway musical. Thank you. Simon you. Peter. Bless you. Roz Thank Ryan, Carolee Carmelo, George Hearn, and Kathy Lee Gifford. Thanks, Thanks for you. having and us. A, and a wonderful Thank cast. you. Bless you guys. Pleasure. Thanks Bless so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be first. The theater. God, what we had to go through to get a drink here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Alan S. Gordon Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you and good night. <laughs>